Hey, it is Andy with the Fence Post Indie Music and Final Blog. And a few days ago, on January 28, 2023, the world lost one of the visionary pioneers of punk rock. Tom Verlaine, whose 1977 album Marquee Moon with the band Television would influence not just punk rock, but other subgenres like post mid 70s art rock, post punk, new wave, alt rock, and 1980s indie rock. For me, Marquee Moon is an easy top five pick for one of the best albums of the 1970s. Earlier, I pulled out my original pressing of Marquee Moon from my collection and gave it a spin. It also reminded me of this little known, long forgotten gem. This bootleg is simply titled Television with Brian Eno, and Brian is misspelled as B-R-Y-A-N with a Y instead of an I, purposefully. You'll also see it referred to as 1974 Hollywood Session Live at Fairland Studios. It's important to note that this is actually, indeed, the legendary 1974 demos that were recorded with Brian Eno in New York that December. And equally important, they predate Marquee Moon by three years. The demo recordings were set up by then Island Records A&R head Richard Williams with Eno Television and engineer John Fausti with Williams booking space at Good Vibration Studio in New York near Times Square. In 2013, Williams wrote of the experience, and I quote, the five tracks we recorded over the course of two days and mixed down on the third, have been endlessly bootlegged, often with inaccurate information attached. The tracks were Prove It, Venus de Milo, Marquee Moon, Friction, and Double Exposure, the last of those being the only one that didn't make it onto their debut album when they finally signed with Elektra two years later. The piano on Marquee Moon was played by Tom. Eno played no keyboards and did not sing on the tracks. And the location was not Fairland Studios, Hollywood. End quote. He does go on to elaborate some of the stuff that isn't always covered. And I quote, Tom didn't like the way things turned out and later blamed Eno. And he quotes Verlaine here. The whole thing sounded like The Ventures. It sounded so bad. I kept on saying, why does it sound so bad? And he, you know, would say, what do you mean? It sounds pretty good to me, end quote. I'll link to William's article in the description below, as well as other resources covered on this video. It's a fascinating first-hand account of early television back when Richard Hell was still in the band. He left in 1975 before Marquee Moon and was ultimately replaced by Fred Smith. So Island wasn't a go, nor was a collaboration with Eno. And contrary to the bootleg here, this was not recorded at Fairland Studios in Hollywood. Additional misinformation on the record sleeve is Fred Smith was not the bassist. It was, as noted, Richard Myers, AKA Richard Hell. And finally, Brian Eno did not provide vocals. It was Tom Verlaine. Highlighted in a 2014 article on Pitchfork titled Invisible Hits, When Eno Met Television, author Tyler Wilcox writes, and I quote once again, taken as a whole, television's Eno tapes provide a tantalizing glimpse of an alternate universe where two of the most powerful forces in the 1970s forged a long-lasting and fruitful working relationship. Alas, it was not meant to be. From the outset, there was, shall we say, friction. See what he did there? <laughs> Love it. Prior to Pitchfork's article, television guitarist Richard Lloyd would note in a YouTube comment to a posting of the Marquee Moon demo, quote, this was not produced by Brian Eno. Richard Williams from Island wanted to record the band and described that he would like to bring Eno along because Richard didn't know anything about 
how to record in studios. So we said okay, but didn't use a single idea that Eno brought. And then, listening back, we realized that Richard Myers, aka Richard Hell, couldn't play bass with Billy all over the place. So he soon after left, and we brought in Fred Smith, and the music got much more stable. This version is too fast. End quote. Another note, there, there are six songs here where Williams recounts five in his blog post. A commenter on Discogs provides a little clarification and context on the final two songs, which the bootleg LP right here credits as Obsession as track five and High Voltage Pleasure as track six, stating that Obsession is actually double exposure and High Voltage Pleasure is another track that wouldn't make it to the final cut for Marquee Moon called Fire Engine. Overall, this is a fascinating glimpse at a collaboration that could have been, but really wasn't meant to be. It's fascinating to hear songs on their way to become true greats that eventually made their way onto Marquee Moon. These Alternate renditions, these extremely lo-fi, stripped of production, all of that stuff is really cool to hear. The following year, 1975, television would share a residency at CBGB with Patti Smith. Wikipedia notes about this, quote, Singer and poet Patti Smith recommended the band to Arista Records president Clyde Davis. Although he had seen them perform, Davis was hesitant to sign them at first. He was persuaded by Smith's then-boyfriend, Alan Lanier, to let them record demos, which Verlaine said resulted in a, quoting Verlaine, much warmer sound than Eno got. However, Verlaine still wanted to find a label that would allow him to produce television's debut album himself, even though he had little recording experience." End quote. Ultimately, Verlaine got what he wanted with Elektra Records, signing with them in August of 76 with their condition that he would be assisted by a well-known recording engineer. That person was Andy Johns, who worked with the Rolling Stones on Goat's Head Soup in 1973. In all, this demo session is one of the earliest recordings, albeit unofficial, available of the band that would go on to influence the works of countless equally influential musicians that followed, from R.E.M.'s Michael Stipe to Red Hot Chili Peppers, John Frusciante. And then you have Will Sargent of Echo and the Bunnymen, all the way to Stephen Morris of Joy Division and New Order. So you have to imagine, what would it be like without television's marquee moon. I'll let you decide. Once again, don't forget, links to all of the references quoted in the research for this video can be found down in the description. Where does marquee moon fall on your list of best albums of the 1970s? Have you checked out these demos? Let me know in the comment. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more music-related stuff, and I will see you next time.